Okay, First Chronicles chapter 17, verse 7. We're coming upon the covenant God made with David. And we'll find this in 2 Samuel 7. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a break for a couple nights out of Chronicles. On the same subject we're looking at right now, we're going to look at this eight covenants in the Bible. And the Bible says, Study and show thyself approved unto unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God, word of truth. Then you've got to get these covenants correct because if you don't, you've got a heresy. And so the covenants are Genesis 1 28, and there are eight of them. Genesis 1 28 is the first one and this would be the Edemic or Adam I don't know why they add the ick to it and 28 says and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply replenish the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth so the first of eight of them is, number one, God told him to re replenish the earth. It's a new order to man. He's to subdue the earth for human uses. I mean, God made, made the garden, he made everything, and man to be the dresser of it. Uh, number two, he's, man is to have dominion over the animal creation. And Adam is going to name these animals. And God has put man in charge of these animals. All of them. And number four, to eat herbs and fruits. All right, so what we got? One, the new order, man. Two, to subdue the earth. Three, have dominion over the animals. Four, to eat herbs and fruits. So man's the first one. And then the, the, the in charge of the earth. In charge of the animals, and number four, to eat herbs and fruits. That's kind of interesting. What do you do if you mess this one up? There is a religion out there that said you can't eat anything but the dietary law found in Leviticus 11. You ought not eat meat. Man was never made to meat eat. That's true. But when Noah came out of the ark, God says you can eat meat if you can bless it. Paul says you can eat anything you want today. If you can say, Lord God, I thank you for this meal. And Peter gets that, that, that great sheet that comes down, rise and eat. Peter says, I have not had any unclean thing. And God says, don't call what I've made unclean. So this this mistake, I mean, this covenants. And then number five for Adam, he's to till and keep the garden. Well, I'm glad that's not salvation today because aren't farms and gardens growing? going? Bye-bye. Aren't they turning to concrete? And then number six is to abstain from eating of, eating of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And then number seven, the penalty is death. So there is a commandment. We, we speak of the big ten commandments. What's the first com commandment we find in the covenant of the of Edenic or Eden covenant? Thou shalt not eat of that fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. The result, death. Well, say goodbye to the Edenic covenant that we know as Bible readers that failed. So that would bring us now to Genesis 3.14 for the second covenant. And Genesis 3.14, we find that the serpent's cursed. We find a curse and sorrow and under the authority of a husband for the wife, the short. And Adam, man, he's, gonna, he's cursed, but he's going to work, he's going to sweat, and he's going to go back to the dust. He's got to work and, and sweat. So this covenant is the Edemic covenant. And the conditions... Is the life of fallen man. These conditions must remain till the kingdom age. 
Man is going to sweat. Man is going to die. Man has to work for his labor. The only way this covenant, this, this age will end is when Jesus Christ comes and removes the curse off the earth, except the serpent. The curse that he gets in verse 15. And the Bible speaks about he's still going to eat dust in the millennium. So number one in this covenant, the serpent, Satan's tool, is cursed. Number two is the first promise of the Redeemer, verse 15. 315 is the first prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a virgin birth prophecy. It is that Jesus Christ, not at the first coming, but at the final of ages to be ages, is going to bruise the head of the serpent. So we find at the very moment when, when man has disobeyed the commandment of God, God is yelling and chastising the serpent. He throws in there for man, not even talking to the man. I'm going to send a redeemer. And then number three, the changed state of the woman. Multiplied conception. Motherhood would be linked to sorrow. Headship of, the, of her would be the man. The number four of this one is the earth is cursed. Number five is there'll be sorrow in life. So everybody says, cheer up, be peaceful, be happy. Just put your happy face on. No, not in this age. Physical death. There was no death in the Edemic covenant this is number two but we got a problem with that one uh genesis 9 1 the next one number three is noetic or noah's covenant and genesis 9 1 and god blessed noah his sons and said unto him be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Does that sound familiar? God has drowned out the entire world and earth. But eight human beings. Two male and female of the unclean. And by sevens the male and females of the clean. Noah will come out of his ark. And he's on top of the world. The only thing that has more population than Moda and, uh, Noah and, the, and those animals in the ark is sea life. And some insects, you know, that lived in dead bodies and stuff like that. So under the, the Noah covenant, we have the relationship of the relation of man to the earth under Adam covenant is confirmed. Noah, you're in charge. You're the one in charge. You're in charge of the animals. You're in charge of this. You're sitting the only man on top of the world. Like Adam. The order of nature is confirmed. Man's in charge. Man's in charge. All right, number three is the human government is established. When we spoke about Abraham was, I mean, when we spoke about Adam was this Adam and Eve and no children. Now we got Noah and his wife. He's got three sons and their wives. You've got a beginning more of a human population than you had with Adam. The earth is secure against another universal judgment by water. There will never ever be again a worldwide flood. Now you'll have regional floods, you'll have stateside floods, you'll have floods of a river, floods of a lake, flood, but it's never going to be a universal worldwide flood. The next one to come will be fire and the burning of the elements, Peter said. Then we have the prophecy of the declaration made to Ham that he's going to be inferior and have a ser servant to. He's going to serve his brother. He's going to serve Japheth. He's going to serve Ham. I mean, Shem, excuse me. Whether you like it or not, there it is. 
Then you have the, the prophecy of Shem and the particular relationship of Shem to Jehovah in which we will have the Lord Jesus Christ be born. Ham is the servitude. Shem is the religious one. And then you have Japheth, his prophecy. He is the he enlarges. He's the government. He's the science. He's the art. He's the one speaking. He's the one that builds. He's the one taking care of his brothers. Why in America is America have its doors open to everybody? Because Shem, I mean, Japheth is taking care of his brothers. And we, I don't know the birth orders of these. But there's a particular giving to Noah and his sons. So, Japheth gets in trouble when he goes in the realm of religion. That would be Seventh-day Adventism, because he's not Shem. He gets into Mormonism, he gets into Jehovah Witnessism, he gets into Karis. That's all Japheth. That's all America. You, you know, you, and I'm doing this thing with, with yoga and all that, that Eastern religion. That's Shem. Oh, we're so angry that the African American is slaves and all that, as bad as it is. That's what the Bible said. You don't like it? Well, you have a problem against God. And there have been some great hymns that come out of the slavery movement in America worshiping God. There ain't no good music coming out of the, out of the, out of the cars today of the African American. It's filth. It's puke. It's against people. Police. I can say that. The next one. Genesis 12, 1, Abraham. This is where we get now into even more a racist problem. God is going to set forth his covenant of one man. Of one son. And not the Arabians. And one race of people of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the twelve tribes. There's no others. And 12, 1, now the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country separation from thy kindred division and from thy father's house separation unto a land that I show thee all right here's a land in verse 3 he says I will curse them that curse you and I will bless them that no other person has that thing no other person has set forth we had an illustration on Friday that someone owns a piece of land we don't want God or Jesus Christ or the gospel here unless you pay us money okay God has given you that right to own property. But you're going to hold judgment to what you do with that property on the respect is that this world is God. God's the creator. You say, well, this you know, when you sing that, that song, this world uh, is his land, whatever that garbage is, it ain't God's world. It's Satan's world. Because if this world was his hand, this world was God, everybody would love the gospel. No one would be upset about the gospel. So you sing whatever hunky donkey camp sign uh, song you want, it couldn't be against the Bible and God. So this one, we have, again, Abraham, and we need to go over to chapter 15, verse 18 of Genesis, for this one to be explained. And this is the covenant, 15, 18. I wanted to do 12, 1, because that's also a promise to Abraham. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. And they listen. So, what problems can we have we don't study our Bible? All right? Let's go back to the, to the, no, the Noah covenant, Noahic, however they say it. Has God ever told you or anybody in the church age to go build an ark? He told a man, a man Noah to build the ark and I'm going to destroy the whole earth, correct? So why is it in, in America, Japheth, why is he built an ark in the church age to make money? Because that's the realm of Japheth. Nowhere from this side of Calvary, the, the tomb and the empty tomb, of the scriptures of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do we ever find to build the ark? But we got in trouble. 
Somebody has crossed into the wrong covenant. Now we have the Abrahamic covenant. We got a piece of land. What's the trouble with this land? Well, the name of religion of Mother Church and our history, we're going to go out with the Crusades. We're going to go out with our soldiers. We're going to go conquer Jerusalem in the name of Mother Catholic. They got Bible for it. They run the verses we're looking at right now. When they came to America, and then after the pilgrims, they became the, the congregationalists. They set up, you look it up in Massachusetts, the new Israel. And early in America, the roots are, we are the new Israel. We are the new Jew. We've got the covenant. If you don't want to believe in this. We're going to confiscate your land. We're going to put you in prison. We're going to put you in jail. We're going to take your cows. We're going to take you if you do not give to this one big church called the Congregational Church. Look it up in the history. And those that believe the Bible, those who believed on Jesus Christ as their, as their Savior, were called separatists in New England, in America. Where did they get that from? Well, God is all finished with the Jew. He's all finished with Abraham. You mess with us. God's going to curse you. We're in charge. Let's look at the Abraham covenant here. It's formed in Genesis 12.1. It's confirmed in Genesis 13, 15, and many different parts. And it has seven great things. Look at your true history now when I read these things off. People who have imitated and stolen the Jewish. I will make of thee a great nation, God told Abraham. Old Mother Catholic Church, she's got her own flag, she's got her own postal service, she's got her own military. They think they're the great nation. They're the great city, Babylon. Except for when you go to Babylon, Revelation. When Peter says Babylon, oh, that's us. Revelation, Babylon, that's not us. Though it's their colors. He said also to Abraham, I will bless thee. Now, wouldn't you just love to have that? We're the most happiest church around because God's blessing. Now, look how great we are. Glad to see him. Number three, he said, I will make thy name great. So, what name is worldwide by the media when you say the word Christian? It's not a Bible-believing, born-again Christian. It's Mother Church who has stolen the identity of Abraham. And thus other churches. People in religion say God's all finished with the Jew. Church of England's like that. They believe the Church of England, and upon that, I forget the name of that stone there, where, you know, where I forget what tribe, and it doesn't really need to be known. But all the kings and queens are, are sir knighted on that stone of the heritage. We are the Jews. The sun never set upon the English Empire. Yeah, no, not no more. Not when you change the uh, Revised Standard Bible. You were good during the uh, Philadelphia church age, but you're sour now. In verse 4, and thou shalt be a blessing. You ready for that one? That runs you to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not come of the African race, some guy said to us Saturday morning. You're African race, sorry, but the Bible says you're servitude. That Jesus Christ could not come from Hollywood because that's Jathan. Jathan builds skyscrapers. He builds a big Hollywood sign on the mount on the mountainside. He builds the rivers to bring the waters into a city that has no water. He builds the casino so you can lose your money. Jathan is not religious. We see the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll make thee a great nation. I'm going to be a great nation of Jesus Christ, New Jerusalem. Christ it blesses me. Number five, I will bless them that bless thee again. Nowhere, no nation has ever fallen upon that blessing of God. Go ask Germany. Go ask England. Go ask Russia. The nations have gone against the Jewish people. And we have, I will bless thee that bless thee, and I will curse them that curse thee. Five and six. And then number seven, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed by Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ. You're not going to find God's son in Ham. You're not going to find God's son in Japheth. You're not going to find him in Ishmael. 
You're not going to find them in Lot. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Again, there's a note here. The gift of the land is modified by prophecy of three dispensations and restorations. No matter what Israel did, how much Israel sinned, God said, all right, I'm going to I'm going to beat your butt. I'm going to punish you. I'm going to chastise you. But you're going back. History has proved that. Ezra, Nehemiah. World War I, World War II. They're, they're out of the will of God. When Jesus Christ comes in the second advent, they're going back to the land. No matter what the United Nations say. By the way, the United Nations is mostly made of Japheth. They have no religious power. They're not of Jesus Christ. And then we go away to Exodus 19.25. This one goes long. But it doesn't leave Abraham. In Exodus 19.25, we have so simple. So Moses went down to the people and spank unto them. And chapter 20, you have the law. There was no law before this. Don't tell me that Reuben was against the law for lying with his father's uh, uh, concubine because that's not a law yet. Don't tell me, you know, Isaac could not eat certain food that Jacob brought. It's not, no, the law is now. Here's the law. Here's the Mosaic covenant. It's given to Israel. Do you know a church, seven-day Adventists, that say you can't eat this meat? I do. I've been to their hospital. I can't order pork. I asked them, well, the law says you can't have pork. I said, we're not under the law. Are you guys going to work Saturday? Yeah, we got a staff coming in Saturday. You're against the law. Listen, they took a man picking up sticks, and they had, they stole them, God told them to do. You guys going to come here and take my blood pressure and all that? They're going to stone you if you're under the law. So the seven-day Aventus have stolen from God. They're one of the churches that's stolen from God. Number two, it's in three divisions, each essential to the other. So, let's, uh, where is it? You have the commandments expressing the righteous will of God, you have the judgments governing. The social life of Israel. And you have the ordinances which governs the religious life of Israel. The commandments are God's will. God's righteous will. Boy, how far we fall short on that one. The judgments that are given. That is the government that Israel will have in their land. Got to have laws. And then the ordinances is that religious life of a church state system under God. What you to do, what you not to do. The Ten Commandments is broken into two, as two aspects. Verses 1, 2, and 7 are all your relationships to God. Verses 5 and the rest of them your relationship to others. What you do against God, what you do against your neighbor. False witness, adultery, steal, your parents, coveting, that's against people. People first. Thou shalt know other gods, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain, thou shalt uh, worship the Lord, thy Lord thy God only, thou shalt uh, make no images, the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was an honor that God took a rest from his created word. The Sabbath day points to the creator. That's in the realm of God, the creator. So now Israel gets the law by Moses. We set up by the foundation of Abraham. We move to the, to the lawgiver, Moses. Then we have the Palestine or Palestine. And we want Deuteronomy 30, verse 3. So already you can fall into the Mosaic. And you can have, I, I, I don't believe what you would do, but you can have people say you're under the law. You haven't rightly studied your Bible. You're going to be made ashamed one day. 
You know, Paul does back every single Ten Commandments, all but the Sabbath. He says, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, you shouldn't lie, you should treat your parents, honor your mother and father. He says in Ephesians and in Colossians, I believe it. I know it's Ephesians. The only one that he ever never backs up is the Sabbath. Huh? Ephesians 1 or 2. So, in, in the book of Ephesians, he backs those things. We are to do that, but not salvation. When you go into a certain church or their hospital, and they make you under the law, they're trying to make you a good person. Ridiculous. And Deuteronomy 30, verse 3, that the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion on thee, and we return and gather thee from all nations, where the Lord thy God has scattered thee. So here's the Palestinian covenant. Again, now this is land. This is where the government. In order to build a wall, you have to say that that's your land and this is my land. By whose rule? What? Ephesians, Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. For the children, honor thy mother and father. Who says between America and Mexico, somebody doesn't know their history. Long before the American or any American nation, the Mexicans were crossing those borders left and right. There were no borders. But who says that? Well, let's put it like this. As far as God goes, he doesn't care about America. He doesn't care about Russia. He cares about one particular land. It's called Palestine. The land of Canaan. And he's already redone. We looked at through Abraham. He's given that land to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the seven points on this one is. There's a dispersion for disobedience. Yes, God will kick them out of the land. For disobeying him. There's a future repentance of Israel. While in the dispersion. They will be kicked out, but they will get right with God. That's not taught in churches today, many of them. Number three, the return of the Lord. When we read in verse three of Deuteronomy, that's the second advent of Jesus Christ. Finally settling the Jew in his land forever. And God's going to wipe away the, all that. He's going to fiery and burn up all the elements. And he's going to give the Jew the new earth. Make it even better for them. Restoration to the land. Yeah, that's been in the workings, but it's not complete. You can go over there as a Christian and visit the Holy Land. And the Jewish people and the Catholics and the Arabians will make you pay money to drive you around a little buggy, a little bus, and say, this is where not Jesus was. This is not the garden where Jesus was. And the guy who wears his collar on back will say, this is where Jesus died on Calvary. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, sir. Bible says in Hebrews he died without the gate. Why are you in the gate? You wait till Jesus Christ takes us through that land. Honestly and rightfully, the way, the truth, and the life. Wait till he explains everything that really happened. Not a religion. And if you're a good uh, Arabian and you took care of Israel during the tribulation period as a good Arab Arabian, which I doubt you will be, but you will go into land with Jesus and the Jews. What year did some of them go back? Uh, World War One. I, I forget the date. World War One. It prepared the land, and World War Two. It prepared the people. I think it's 1914 and 19. I, don't, I forget what year the World War II was. But World War I prepared the land and then World War II prepared the people. And they haven't been back yet. And number five is national conversion. That has not happened yet. That's where God will give them a new heart, a, a law written in their hearts. And they will do right. No matter what your church teaches. And then number six, the judgment upon Israel's oppressor. There's that I will curse them that curse you. The enemies of Israel will be judged by God. Now as far as he came unto his own, his own received them not. That's between God and them. 
And if you mistreat that Jew, which is not popular teaching today, God's going to mistreat you. Don't come up with the love of God and hate the Jew. Absolutely not. And then number seven, a national prosperity. That Jew will be above all people. The Israelite will be God's apple of their eye. The people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be D of the of the of all D. The only above D of the Israelites will be the God, the Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. That's the land promise, Palestinian. Now, uh, 2 Samuel 7, 16. And this is the one that we have in Chronicles. 2 Samuel 7, 16 is the Davidic covenant. And you get this in Psalms 89, 27, too. 27, not, not 2. Psalms 89, 27. Now, this is what we're going to be studying when we go back to Chronicles in a couple nights. Because Lord willing, we're going to get into the dispensations before we go back. Because wouldn't it be great for somebody in 2019 to say, We're the of God. Don't mess with us. And not be Jewish. And yet there are people in religion who say, We're it. We're the ones. You haven't studied your Bible. Now let's look at David. This kingdom, uh, excuse me, this covenant is upon the glorious kingdom of Christ. Of the seed of David according to the flesh. So, historically it is Solomon. Doctrinally it's Jesus Christ. And there are spiritual applications to the Christian. Now number one of this covenant is the house of David, the posterity, the family. How many years have we run away from the captivity and they're brought back and they sin and they sin and they sin and they sin and there's a little woman doing something. I don't know what she was doing. I'm not going to suggest. But there she is. And angel Gabriel says, Mary, the Lord has great favor in you. You're going to have a son. You're going to name his name Jesus and he's going to take the throne of David. You know how many names were in Israel? And God told Jeremiah, and uh, I don't know the chapter and the verse, but he said, Oh, earth, oh, earth, 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 write this man, Zedekiah, I believe it's Jeconiah, write this man childish, the virgin birth. No man of this seed shall ever sit on the throne of Israel again. We see the promise of David's family, though, in Jeremiah has been cursed. We've got to have the, the we got to have now all the prophecies. Genesis three fifteen was spoken long be before Jeremiah. Isaiah seven was spoken maybe before or around Jeremiah, and God knew He was going to curse that seed of David, and yet through the virgin birth. David's house is going to sit on that throne again. Jesus Christ. Number two, it's a throne. It's a royal authority. Have you ever seen where the Pope sits? Have you ever seen the masculine of the, of the splendor of the Queen of England? Where she sits? You ever see the greatness of the Oval Office? You ever see all these people trying to get their selves identity of I'm the ruler of the world. Even Satan's tried that. And the Bible speaks to this, the seven churches where Satan's seat is. Satan tried to tempt Jesus Christ with that throne power. And that throne of power is not nobody but of David. Guess what? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then you run all the way to David. Then you run it all the way to Jesus Christ. That's the throne of all thrones. And then when Jesus comes, mounts back up, gets on that horse, and we're behind, King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus is never king of the church. Take those hymns and throw them in the garbage. Jesus, my king. He's my savior. He's my husband. He's my friend, but he's no king. And not only do we have the throne as authority, but we have a kingdom. A spear of, ru of rulership. 
what would a king and a throne be if you didn't have a land? Well, look at that land. We go back to the to the Palestinian covenant. We go back to the Abraham covenant. There is one particular group of religion of Mother Church who wants a particular piece of land. And she had in her history that if anybody were to go into Jerusalem and kill people, they would have the greatness of the power of the Pope that they would get out of hell and get out of purgatory and go right to heaven if they killed people in, in the land of Israel. And those people that believe that lie are burning in hell, probably cussing out that Pope and all the orders thereof. We fall in the realm right now of the United Nations where Israel has no stand. We must give it to the PLO. We must give it to the Jordan. And God says, go jump in the lake while I give it to my people. People don't like what I'm preaching right now. Number four, it's forever. The covenant of David has no end. The Edemic kingdom ended. The Edemic kingdom ended. By the way, Noah's has an end because God said, I'm not going to drown it out with a flood no more. It would be fire. They have, the Abrahamic going to be forever. I don't know about the law in, in the eternal life. I know the law will be in the millennium. But I don't know about the eternal life. And the Palestinian, God's going to give them a new earth. So we're going to have a new earth. That divine order of David, of his throne, to Jesus forever. And the fourfold covenant has but one condition. Disobedience in David's family will be visited upon chastisement. But it's not going to make the covenant void or not. If under David, if you do wrong, God's going to chastise you. But he ain't going to forget you. He ain't going to spare you. He ain't going to leave or forsake you. Hebrews says. Hebrews says. Hebrews. What is Hebrews? Hebrews. Got it? Here we go. <laughs> How simple. You must be trying to steal a Hebrew passage. In the church. I guess. I don't know. All right, and then one last one. Hebrews 8.8. 8. Oh, Hebrews 8.8. 8. <laughs> oh, okay. Hebrews 8.8. 8. The New Covenant. The last one. Hebrews 8.8. 8. <coughs> Do you know what 8 in the Bible means? A new beginning. A new beginning. Oh, look at that. that now, I, I am not going to say 100% that chapters and verses are divine order of God. I'm going to say they're 99.9% .9 divine order of God. Those chapter markers came late in the Christian church. I mean, Christian, Bible-believing, God-fearing, washed under the blood. And Hebrews 8, 8, it says, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of the church. So come on, church age, open your Bible to Hebrews and let's look at us. Now, Spiritually, you can apply Hebrews to Christians. Doctrinally, what's it say? Hebrews. And the Satan, I, I, I've been trying to go back through it, but Satan has put my mind elsewhere. I, I got to go back through this. So, new covenant to Israel and the house of. Tell me one man that we talked about tonight that comes from Judah. David. Well, guess what? There's the Davidic covenant that never ends. It never ends. It goes to the New Covenant. The New Covenant summary. Number one. Again, there's seven. Better than a Mosaic Covenant. There's something wrong with that law. You couldn't follow the law. It made you a sinner. So Jesus Christ came. It established, number two, a better, unconditional promise. What did the law give you? It gave you death. <laughs> if you didn't do what God told you to do, you end up in hell. What's this new? Man, it just gives you forever to be with Jesus and God. 
Uh, line number three. Under the Mosaic Covenant, obedience sprang from fear. Under the New Covenant, it comes from a willing heart and mind. I want to do it. If I look at my, my neighbor's tractor and I want God's going to hold no, what, what is God going to do? Oh, I, it's got to cost me an animal. It's going to. But under the new covenant, oh, Lord God, you've been so great, so wonderful. Man, you got us out under that Antichrist. You've taken care of us under Nebuchadnezzar. You're so great. You're so wonderful. N the, number four, the new covenant secures the personal re revelation of the Lord to every believer. To the Hebrews, to the Jewish people. Here's your Messiah. They didn't feel that way at the first advent. Number five. Uh, the complete ovation. Get rid of sins. No sins to be even thought about. What sins are you talking about? Of the nation of Israel. You mean, you mean the ones that put Christ on the cross? God, I don't remember that no more. The ones that did that, I dealt with them. The nation. Uh, number six. It rests upon accomplished redemption, and that accomplished redemption is upon Jesus Christ, not the blood of bulls, calves, goats, frankincense, whatever the law said. It's all upon Jesus Christ. Those Jewish people as a nation one day will have that same relationship that I have with Jesus and nothing of what I've done. Number seven is secure. A future conversion and blessing for Israel. And, the eight, and it speaks of a resurrection and eternal completeness for the Jews. After this, I believe you can safely say there will be no problems of the Jewish people, Abraham, Isaac, and especially of David, of Judah, and the tribes thereof. There will be no more disobedience of that Jewish nation to God once we get into the eternity. Now, there'll be some Jewish people, some people in the millennium, uh, they're going to do wrong. When Jesus folds up that kingdom, he lets the devil out, and the, de the devil gets a complete massive army. And God just, you're gone, but. In the millennium, there, there's, there is people who will sin. But oh, when we get out in eternity, no more sin. No more. You got to get your covenant straightened because, I mean, you could say you can't eat certain fruits. You can say, well, I'm in control of the animal race, so I'm going to save the whales. That's not what God meant when he put you in dominion over the animals. You could say, well, uh, get down to earth, hug a tree, save the owls, endemic. No, that's not going to work. You can even say, build an ark. There's two arcs being built, one built and one being built now. That's not salvation. One's actually a building. The other one's a building. Yeah. Let God deal with him about that. I mean, what if I went knocking on the door and say, Hey, how you doing? I'm from the, the, the church. And I must tell you, you must build an ark to be saved because, you know, the Bible says there's a flood coming. Am I wrong? No. Nope. What have I done wrong? I just studied to show myself approved unto God. I'm going to be made ashamed. If I go about and say, hey, listen, you know, if you want God to be happy with you, don't eat me. And for sure, don't eat the tree of the, of the good and knowledge and evil. Well, what's that? I don't know. Don't eat it. Okay. Am I wrong? No. But I didn't study to show myself proof under God. You got to rightly divide. And these covenants, look what they're dealing with. There's no church age in these covenants. Now, I, I forget that there is, again, in New England of America, there's, there's something new covenant. I forget what, what they called it. The great lights, the new lights, something like that. Those, Edemic, okay, that's mankind, all mankind. That was Adam. 
That didn't last very long. Adam and Mrs. Adam sinned. After Mr. and Mrs. Adam sinned, God gave him the demic. There was no church age in Adam's time. And then the, the sons and daughters of, of, Ab of Adam, they, they got wicked. Their, 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 their thoughts and their imagination were just wicked. It just angered God. He said, I'm going to destroy it all. Noah, come here. Noah was a Gentile. I want you to build an ark. Get your family in there. Two of, two of every unclean animal and by seven is a clean animal. And let's do this thing. He does it. Builds the ark. God does what he does. Passes judgment. Noah got out of the ark got drunk. And there was some kind of relations between uh, Shem and the father there, which we don't know. A lot of speculation. Huh? Uh, not Shem. Ham. Oh, done with that. I'm going to call the first Jewish Hebrew Abraham. And since Abraham, all those covenants are referenced to Israel. And my thing is, don't mess with Israel any way, shape, or form. If you do, God will mess with you. They're God's people. Support for them, pray for them. Paul says, I pray that, that uh, Jerusalem will be saved. Paul went out. Paul went and despised God. <laughs> God told Paul, you're going to the Gentiles, and Paul went to the to the Hebrews, to the Jewish people. 